Hi, my name's Susan, and I am here because this year is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and today we are going to talk about a very important part of the Earth, and that is frogs and toads. So what are frogs and toads? Frogs and toads are amphibians, which means they can breathe through their skin, and also they spend part of their life as a tadpole in the water. They then go through metamorphosis, and when they become adults, they can then survive on the land. A big difference between frogs and toads is that frogs generally have smoother skin and spend most of their time in the water, whereas toads have drier, bumpier skin and spend more time in drier areas like woodlands. So you're more likely to see a toad in your backyard than a frog. So frogs and toads can be found in a few different kinds of habitats. The one important thing they need is a water source nearby. So you can find them at lakes, you can find them at ponds, wetlands, any kind of swamp, um, any kind of wet area. Um, or as toads can also survive in a little bit drier area as long as they can access water nearby. So toads can live in places like woodlands, fields, and also your own backyard. So why are frogs important? There are three big reasons. One, frogs eat a lot of bugs. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but there's some bugs flying around me right now. Um, they just help keep our bug population under control. And that means we don't have to use as much bug spray and our crops don't need to use as many pesticides. Two, Frogs are a big part of the food chain. Frogs eat, when they're tadpoles, they eat algae and help keep the water clean. Um, as they get older, they eat, like I said, they eat bugs. Some of them even eat other frogs. Um, and also things eat frogs, like birds and fish. So if we didn't have frogs anymore, there'd be a huge interruption, interruption in the food chain that would affect all different kinds of animals. And the third reason frogs are important is because they are something called an indicator species. What that means is that everything in the environment affects them, and if something's going wrong, we're gonna see it in the frog population first. So scientists will actually look at frogs to see how well an environment's doing. If the environment's doing really well, the frogs are doing really well. If the environment's not doing so well, then the frogs probably aren't doing so well either. So what are some things in the environment that might be hurting frogs? A big one is loss of habitat. As things like construction and agriculture move in, sometimes that means frogs don't have as many places to live. Also, Pollution is a big thing that can harm frogs, especially if it's in the water. Uh, like I said earlier, frogs breathe through their skin. They also absorb everything through their skin. So any pollution that's in the water they live in is going to get into those frogs and cause them harm. So what are some things you can do to help frogs? A big one is what you're doing right now. Just learning about frogs and then sharing that information with your family and friends so that they can learn how cool frogs are too. Another thing you can do is make sure you're helping to keep the environment clean. So don't litter. Uh, if you have cleaning supplies at home, make sure you dispose of them properly after you use them. And just really do what you can to keep the water clean. So a third thing you can do is participate in something called a citizen science project. A citizen science project is a science experiment that's going on that you can help contribute to right from your home. And one big one going on is about frog calls or the different sounds frogs make. This helps scientists get an inventory of the frogs that live in your area. This is something you can do right in your backyard. You don't need to go anywhere special. You'll probably be able to hear quite a few frogs just from where you live. Um, and this is the perfect time of day to do it. In case you're wondering why I'm out here when it's getting so uh, dark, uh, this about an hour after sunset is the best time to monitor for frog calls. All right, so to get started on listening for frog calls, what you're gonna do is about a half hour after sunset, you're gonna go out in your yard or wherever you're gonna monitor, um, and you're gonna get situated and you're gonna get very quiet and you're just gonna listen. At first, you might not be able to tell the different frog calls apart. That's okay, it takes a lot of practice. But you can just start by seeing how many you hear and how many different kinds you hear. I'm going to show you some examples of recordings of frog calls, so you know a few that you might be able to listen for in this area. But even if you just go outside and know that you're hearing frogs and don't know exactly which ones they are, that's just as good. So a really great resource to practice learning frog calls um, is actually on the Indiana DNR website. They have a section called Frogs and Toads of Indiana. It lists a few common frogs and toads throughout the whole state. Um, you can click on them. And each one is going to have a picture and it's going to have a description and all kinds of information about that frog or toad. So it'll have its habitat, where you're going to find it, um, what time of year that you're most likely to hear the calls. This one's late March through June. 
And also it's gonna have a recording of the call. So you can actually hear what it sounds like and practice listening so that when you go outside and listen for your own frog calls, you'll know which ones you're hearing. So I'm gonna play this, just a heads up, this one's a little, it's kind of a really high pitched trill, like a really shrill, so just prepare your ears for it. <laughs> All right, so that was the American toad. There were some other things mixed in there too, but that main one, the first sound you hear was the American toad. We'll do a couple more. How about we try the, we'll try the bullfrog. This is probably a sound some of you are familiar with. Again, you have the description, you have the time of year, um, May through July. So this is when you might hear this time of year. And here is the recording. This one's really low, like a deep, deep bass. I think those guys almost sound like cows. So that is the bullfrog, common frog in our area. We'll do a couple more. We'll try the western chorus frog. This one's gonna sound sort of like you're running your fingers over the teeth of a comb, like a really fine tooth comb. So this one, you're most likely here mid-February to mid-May, so this is kind of an early spring. Here's its call. Again, Western Chorus Frog. And we'll do one more. So the next one is another frog. This is one of the first ones you would hear if you were out listening for frogs in the spring. As it just starts to warm up, you're gonna to start to hear the spring peeper. Once you hear this frog's call, you're gonna know exactly why it's called this. Um, these guys are very, very tiny, about 3 4 inch to 1 and 3 8 inch. Um, they also have a dark X on their back. If you ever do someone there, see one in the wild, they're very, very small though. Um, you can kind of see part of the X here. But here's its call. All right, so in the background, you kind of heard those toads calling too. Um, but you can hear it makes a peeping sound. It goes peep, 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 hence why it's called the spring peeper. So again, one of the first frogs you're gonna hear when it starts to warm up outside. So you can go through these and listen to them as many times as you want. This is a great way to practice learning how to identify frog calls. And then once you know them really well, you'll be able to go outside and be able to identify exactly which frogs are calling when they're out in your backyard. All right, so one way to help frogs is that you can participate in citizen science projects. If you decide you're really interested in frogs and you really wanna do the work to learn frog calls, this is a great project for you to participate in. It's from the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. It's called Frog Watch USA. So this is a group of scientists who put out together a training so that people like you can go out into their communities and monitor the frogs that you're hearing every day. So there's all kinds of resources on here. There's a training you can do, and again, this is all free. Um, and you can learn how to become a frog monitor and then all the data you collect you can enter into their database and it's going to get shared with people all over the world and not with the scientists that are working on this project. So this is a great way to help frogs if you decide you're very into learning frog calls and keeping track of the ones you hear. So now you are going to get a chance to practice identifying some frog calls. We have some recordings of frogs that were made right here in Porter County so you can practice listening, picking out which ones are which, and seeing if you can identify the specific frogs in these recordings. So I hope you guys had a great time learning about what frogs and toads are, why they're important, and some different ways we can help them. Um, I hope you guys had fun, and I'm really glad you could join me.